This is war. Early in the morning, Ukrainian formations launched attacks on several sections of the border in the Belgorod and Kursk regions, using a total of up to three battalions and several dozen pieces of equipment, as well as troops from the RDK and other structures as media cover. The DRG concentrated forces and launched attacks from Bolshaya Pisarevka, Odnorobovka, and Popovka. The Russian units in their positions entered the battle and are supported by Army aviation helicopters. Clusters are also observed in the Goptovka area. Artillery and bombers are striking areas where Ukrainian armed forces units are concentrated. Lancet operators are also active. According to preliminary information, during the morning they managed to burn several units of AFU equipment. At the same time, a high density of electronic warfare interference is recorded in the combat zone. Ukrainian formations are firing at border settlements with artillery and MLRS, and one of the UAVs hit the administration building in the center of Belgorod, breaking out several windows. Russian air defense systems are actively working, and in the morning they shot down several Tochka U missiles and drones. Clashes in the border areas of the Belgorod region are still ongoing. The AFU also launched an attack in the direction of Tetkino in the Kursk region, but was repulsed as well. Reports about the alleged entry of the Ukrainian armed forces into the village are fake. But while this was going on, the Ukrainian pro-social media warriors took to Telegram and Twitter delivering the situation from their own viewpoint. A wonderful piece of artwork showing how Ukrainian DRG pushed past Russian border guards and taken a strong bridgehead. All the while more evidence was poured on with this video. Urgent. The Kremlin is losing control. Tiotkino has been liberated. We're heading towards Moscow. According to the DRG from some basement, they captured the village of Tiotkino, a village in the Kursk region. But there was an issue. All the video evidence spoke to opposite about the situation. With Russian MOD in attempt to prevent panic and false news of capture of settlement, produced evidence that everything was okay. Frames from the village of Tiotkino, Kursk region, to which GRU special groups tried to break through this morning. Peaceful life continues in the urban village. Shops, institutions, and public transport operate quietly. The Russian MOD reported. The enemy tried to break through the border in three directions and lost 234 militants, seven tanks, three Bradley infantry fighting vehicles, and two armored personnel carriers. The details as follow. Ministry of Defense. At about three o'clock, after intense shelling of civilian targets, Ukrainian terrorists, with the support of tanks and armored vehicles, attempted to invade Russian territory. From the village. Odnorobovka. Kharkov region in the areas of the settlement. Nekotivka and Spodaryushino, Belgorod region. All enemy attacks were repelled by the selfless actions of Russian soldiers. The enemy was hit by operational tactical army aviation missile forces, artillery, and sun scorcher. In the area of the settlement, Odnorobovka, Kharkov region, up to 60 terrorists and four pickup trucks were destroyed. On the border territory from the Ukrainian side in the area of the settlement, Nekotivka, Belgorod region, airstrikes, artillery strikes, and Lancet UAVs destroyed up to 45 militants, two tanks, and two armored personnel carriers. On the border territory from the Ukrainian side in the area of the settlement, Spodaryushino, Belgorod region, through competent actions of units covering the state border, strikes by planes and helicopters with the Whirlwind ATGM, more than 100 militants, five tanks, three Bradley infantry fighting vehicles, and two vehicles advancing towards the Russian border were destroyed. Another one engineering clearing vehicle hit a mine. Also, from 8 o'clock to 8.25 Moscow time, four attacks by Ukrainian sabotage groups trying to break into the border territory in the area of the settlement were repulsed. Tetkino, Kursk region. As a result of the active actions of the units covering the state border of the Western Group of Forces and the border service of the FSB of Russia, the terrorist formations of the Kiev regime were thrown back. As more and more videos were shown to dispute the situation at the front line, it seemed that Ukraine was more hopeful than it appeared. The purpose of this, of course, was to once again attempt to create panic and disorder 
among the Russian public. Ukraine achieved this last year with breakthroughs with DRG in the same area. But it seems the attempt didn't work this time. Complete in the idea of the defeat of the GUR special forces near Nekotevka, tanks were destroyed when trying to break through the border crossing. Czech MLRS Vampire, covering the AFU's offensive group, was covered by artillery. Aviation also covered AFI forces and armored vehicles. To continue AFU today, in the dark, organized a UAV raid on the Bryansk, Voronezh, Belgorod, and Kursk regions. In the Belgorod region, an industrial enterprise was shelled. In the morning, RF air defense crews were still fighting air targets in a number of directions. At 6.30, the armed forces of Ukraine reported shelling of Mokraya Orlovka, Grey urban district, as well as Shebekino. Power supply facilities were out of order. In the Kherson direction, the armed forces of Ukraine still hold part of the settlement. In Krinky, a small group of infantry under the cover of drones and artillery from their shore. Four AFU boats were destroyed while trying to transport supplies across the river. Tonight, strikes were launched against AFU infantry in the area of the Dakas near the Antonovsky Bridge on RF shore. The AFU is preparing for a possible operation of the Russian army to cross the Dnieper, building up a complex of engineering structures and minefields. While a number of sources report threats of the AFU carrying out a pairing campaign in the form of a landing operation on the coast of Crimea or the Kherson region with the goal of destabilizing the internal political situation in Russia. On the Zaporozhye front battles in Rabotino and Verbovoy, the armed forces of Ukraine rotate personnel, carry out strikes from artillery and drones, and mine the area with heavy Baba Yaga drones. The AFU has gathered strength and is preparing counterattacks. The Ukrainian armed forces are deploying long-range cannon and rocket artillery to the Kamensk direction. South of Marienka, the Russian armed forces continue the assault on Novomikhailovka from the south. In the north, progress is slow due to the terrain. RF units target AFU armored vehicles, bringing up reserves and inflicting fire damage. The same can be said about the situation in Georgieka, where Russian forces are coming to push into the city slowly, but with heavy fighting. In the south of the front section against Avdivka, the village of Nevelskoye, DPR, has been taken by RF, which improves the Russian army's ability to advance into Pervomyskoy. The significance of Nevelskoy's release is extremely high. Nevelskoy is one of the most famous points from which the Ukrainian armed forces fired at neighborhoods of Donetsk. The capture of Nevelskoy allows the Russian army to straighten the front line for the further offensive of the Russian army. This will make life easier for RF troops advancing on Krasnogorovka and may also force the Ukrainian armed forces to withdraw from Orlovka, where they are still holding out. And finally, it brings closer the possibility of Russian troops reaching the Karlovskoye and Kurakovskoye reservoirs, which will help improve the water supply of Donetsk and will deprive the Ukrainian armed forces of the possibility of direct shelling of the DPR capital from cannon artillery and most multiple launch rocket systems. There was an issue with another IL-76 crashing today due to the failed engine. All 12 people on board the IL-76 were killed as reported Channel 112. According to published information, the fallen aircraft was on a training flight and remained in the air for several minutes, after which the IL-76's engine caught fire. Meanwhile, Russian sources published another moment of destruction of the next HIMARS of the Ukrainian army. In a short period, the Russian army managed to destroy two HIMARS missile launchers. But information has appeared that, in Romania, a train carrying a dozen MLR's APR-40 multiple launch rocket launchers was filmed 50 kilometers from the Romanian-Ukrainian border. Romania will continue to support Ukraine in the same ways, but will not send soldiers there per Romanian President Klaus Iohannis. For some reason, in Sweden, authorities urge citizens to stock up on canned food before the war with Russia. The government recommends that Swedish residents have at least three months' supply of food and medicine. 
Canned food, a portable water filter, a first aid kit, and a radio are the bare minimum to survive the early days of the war. Sweden calls on the population to stock up on canned food in case of war with Russia, per Social Bites. The government recommends that Swedish residents have a supply of food and medicine for at least three months. By the end of the year, Swedes will receive instructions on how to behave in the face of negative developments. Whatever that means, if someone from Sweden can confirm this, that would be great. Ukrainian commanders told Der Spiegel that the Ukrainian armed forces will not last long. AFU officers spoke about the situation in different sectors of the front. Most of them agree. Due to insufficient supplies, almost all units are forced to conserve ammunition. Some troops can now hold their positions, and then only until the Russian army attacks in full force. If the attacks intensify, then due to the acute shortage of personnel, weapons, and ammunition, they will not be stopped for long. Then the units of the armed forces of Ukraine would have to retreat, however. The positions for retreat are also poorly developed. The Ukrainians are experiencing difficulties now, and the Russians are advancing along the entire front, said military expert Mark Kanchin of the Center for Strategic and International Studies. Ukraine is trying to adhere to an active defense strategy, but instead of counterattacks, it is losing more and more high-quality equipment from the West. Many units will soon run out of ammunition. We won't be able to hold out like this for long the Ukrainian armed forces admitted to the Ukrainian artillery near Ugladar. Meanwhile, mobilization in Ukraine has gotten a bit extreme. Somewhere in Ukraine, TCC officers are trying to push a volunteer into a car while his wife is in tears recording a video of the process. <laughs> With videos like these being published of clusters ammunitions being used on the battlefield. No one can blame them, the Ukrainian mobilized. A truly terrible weapon was used by the Russian armed forces in response to the use of cluster munitions by the armed forces of Ukraine. Ukraine is bankrupt. Bloomberg writes that Standard & Poor's Global Ratings Agency has downgraded Ukraine's credit rating to SS, the penultimate rating before default. This is just the beginning. Kyiv needs to pay debts on bonds and loans from the IMF and there is a hole in the budget. According to S&P, Ukraine's credit rating has dropped to CC in just two years. Now the long-term sovereign rating is negative outlook. Default is more than likely. Debt is vulnerable to non-payments. Ukraine is not wealthy economically either. And then it began. Ukraine is obliged to repay its debts to the United States. Senator Lindsey Graham reminded allies of the gigantic U.S. foreign debt of $34 trillion. We're $34 trillion in debt. Nobody wants to help Ukraine more than I do. But the idea of giving and never being repaid should be off the table. At the last portion of the video, I wanted to use my own voice to be able to kind of add a little bit more context. Um, what you're watching is the full three-minute video that's available of how the assault on uh, Belgorod uh, took today from the ukrainian perspective why am i doing this well i wanted to make a few announcements and i figured that watching stuff get blown up or actual active combat is better than just having a blank screen or just my end promo like i usually do um in order to be able to deliver quality information and to be able to deliver quality news i want to be able to do a sit rep for every single day the problem becomes is that not everything happens on the front line worthy of a video for example there was a lot of portions missing from today's video and that's because nothing's going on really worth reporting but i understand that people sometimes only want to see the map or to get an understanding of logistics so that's fine i will be creating a separate channel sometime next week as a first 
and for all a backup, but second of all, to be able to just do a sit rep for every single day with just basic map. That's all it is, just map. It will be called This Is War Map, the old name of this channel, but so forth and so forth. Um, second thing I wanted to remind people is to support other creators, always support other creators. Uh, one of those creators is on Telegram. It is the SitRep channel. I have added their link at the bottom of this video. Uh, give If you have don't have Telegram, they're also on Twitter. So gives you the ability to find out what's going on at the front line uh, from multiple different sources, not just uh, Russian, uh, single source. There's multiple different creators and, and, and military analysis going on. So feel free to... Uh, add them, support them, and what have you. Um, I will have the new link to the uh, backup channel, secondary channel, up next week when I make everything all pretty and together. Uh, if people want to hear, if it gets popular enough, I'll start using my own voice in the in the videos, but it will be defaulted back to the old voice. And if it gets big enough, I'll brush off my old Google map and give updates. Uh, based on Google Map, and then we'll see where we go from there. But this channel is still going to be the main focus of the attention. So don't worry, it's not going to be ending or dying anytime soon. I enjoy making this content for everybody. Uh, thank you, everybody, for the support, for the love, for the subscriptions, for the thumbs ups, the comments. All of it is welcomed. I appreciate it. I read and I read every comment. I don't reply to every comment, but. I see it. I see everybody's love and support for this channel. It has grown over the past couple of months uh, much faster than my previous one. So thank you very much, and I hope you all enjoy a good day or a good night. Bye.